I hope you're looking forward to this weekend. Uh, I hope you're looking forward to time with your family or with that group that you're with at this time. I want to offer us a short devotional before the weekend, something that I think we ought to think about, that we ought to consider this one that we call Jesus, the Christ. I want this to be an encouragement to each one of us so that we understand who this Christ is. But I also would like for each of us as children of God to take into consideration the example that is set by Christ in the things that we do on a daily basis, especially at this time when things are, uh, let's say, difficult at best some days. In Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 32, it says, Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. We know that at that time they gathered seven loaves and a few small fish. We know that Christ blessed this food and that he broke it and that he fed 4,000 people that day. We know that there was a miracle that occurred there. And yet that is not what I want to focus on today. What I want us to focus on or what I want us to take note of is that when he begins this, he says, he called the disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd. This thought of idea, this thought of this idea of having compassion. If we turn over to Luke, the seventh, uh, Luke, the seventh chapter. <coughs> In verse 11, we're going to read uh, verse 11 through 17 of Luke 7. It says, Soon afterward, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up, and he touched the briar, and the bearer stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us. And God visited and God has visited his people, and the report about, this, about him spread throughout the whole of Judea and the surrounding country. Once again, we notice a miracle happening. We notice this young man raised from the dead. And yet, it's not where I want us to focus today. You see, this widow, she had nothing. We see that it was likely in being in the funeral crowd, she did not even notice Jesus. She had other things on her mind. It says she was weeping. I want us to notice that Jesus was walking along. He had come into this small town. People gathered, uh, maybe more than one crowd, but especially this crowd, this funeral procession or, uh, or whatever it might have been, was a, a crowd that was gathered around uh, this body and this widow. I want us to notice that Jesus notices the widow. He sees her. 
He sees her in her grief. He sees her weeping. I think most all of us can imagine the pain that she was in, but Jesus noticed that pain. He was very observant as he walked his way. But he noticed this woman and her needs. So often we walk through this life We see crowds, we see people. Maybe we see a lot of people, but they're just people that are there. Do we ever look to see each individual? Do we ever take notice of these people and see who they are? to see those going through grief, to see those going through difficulty, to see those who are in pain, or is it just a bunch of people? You know, this death and pain and confusion is an everyday occurrence. And so many of us have become immune to those things, caring so often only about ourselves and possibly our family. But do we ever think about those who are close to us, those who we see at a distance, those who walk across the parking lot, those who maybe don't have what they need for the next meal, maybe just someone who is there and seem to be having difficulties. You know, we can see those things if we will really observe a person. In Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 32, I want you to notice Christ. He said, I have compassion on the crowd. He saw the needs of that crowd. In this Luke 7, 13, it says, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. He saw the individual in that crowd and he knew her needs. He wanted to do something for her. In Matthew, the ninth chapter, close to the beginning of the ministry of Christ, it says that in the 36th verse, it says, And when he saw the crowd, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. You see, he saw people who were lost. He saw each individual of that crowd and their needs. Maybe their hurts, their pains, their difficulties in life. But he looked and he saw each individual. It says he had compassion for them. It's that compassion that alerted his attention. It began to make him take notice of people, that compassion that he had within his heart, his care for fellow man. He searched the crowds knowing their needs he knows our needs. This is one of the most incredible things that I see is that Christ knows each of our needs often before we know what they are. And often in, or, or always in a more perfect sense, he knows exactly what we need. He knows what our real needs are. And he wants to give them to us. He wants to help us through this life. He cares about each individual. He longs for them to be his. That's the first thing I want us to understand is that God cares about us. 
God is concerned about the situation that each of us find ourselves in. He's concerned about our being. He's concerned about our souls and our ability to deal with the situations that come day in and day out. He wants to give us care. The other thought that I would like for us to take with us is, are we willing to open our hearts to compassion and to give our attention to others? Are we willing to open ourselves up? Are we willing to look at each individual we pass by or that we see every day and look at them and seek to know their needs? Seek to give them comfort. Seek to help them along their way, just as Christ did. You know, this is what he asked of us. He asked us to be those who care for others. He asked us to look after others. In 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 2, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. And with the comfort of which we ourselves are comforted by God, for as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. You see, we have the comfort of God. As children of God, we have a comfort. We know that he's there. We know that he cares. But there are so many, many people out there who do not know that God cares about them. They don't know that he cares about their soul. We have that availability. We have the ability to take this word that God has given us to others, to teach them, to show them, to help them find this care. But it takes us being willing to be attentive to someone. Just as Christ was attentive to those that were around him, he saw them. We need to also look and see those around us and be willing to give them the things that they need, that they truly need. I hope that you find this weekend enjoyable. Whatever it is that you find yourself in, find those things that are good and realize that we have good things in our life, even in difficult times. We ask that you would remember those that you see, that you would strive to give them the comfort that each one of them needs each day. Thank you so much.